I'm uh, Dr. Katrina Ilvis. I'm a research scientist in ichthyology in the zoology section of the Canadian Museum of Nature. We're sitting here in the large vertebrate wet lab. Uh, it's a preparation lab that we use to identify specimens, uh, prepare them for final deposition into our collection, take photographs and work on our specimens. So my research here at the museum involves using the specimens in our collection as well as those from other museum collections to study fish evolution uh, and the evolution of biodiversity in particular. Uh, now, in order to study biodiversity, you need to focus on one of the fundamental units of biodiversity, which is the species. Now, if you are watching, listening, and understanding this video, that makes you a member of the species Homo sapiens. And what you may have noticed is that there's actually two Latinized words in that species name, the genus and the species. This is an example of a lamprey. So this is one of the earliest fishes on the fish family tree. Uh, it has a cartilaginous skeleton and also it doesn't have a jaw. So in place of its jaw, it has this oral disc and if you look closely, it is full of very spiny sharp teeth. This particular lamprey is parasitic and it uses these sharp teeth and this sucker-like disc to attach to the side of a unlucky fish prey, usually a salmon of some kind. Now this fish uh, was named Lampetra macrostoma. So macrostoma means large mouth. And if you look closely, you can see that it does have a very large mouth. And this was of course relative to other members um, of the uh, genus that it's related to. So this is a specimen that was collected in 1965 by Dr. Ian Efford from the University of British Columbia as part of a Canadian expedition of scientists and medical doctors to Easter Island. Uh, so one of the specimens that was collected uh, on this expedition is sitting right here in our national collection. Uh, and this was a specimen that was sent by uh, Dr. Efford to another fish scientist at the University of Miami, who is a renowned expert in marine fishes, Dr. Rick Robbins, and he identified it as something very interesting. So he was able to determine that it is a cusk eel in the genus Ophidian. Uh, Ophidian actually means snake-like in uh, ancient Greek. He realized that it was something slightly different. So it wasn't like any other Ophidian that we knew about. So he knew it was something that needed a new name. Now there are some rules that have been designated by uh, the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature on how we name a species name, but it's really up to the scientists who found the species. So this is a species that was found on Easter Island, which is very isolated. It's over 3,500 kilometers away from the coast of Chile. And so Dr. Robbins decided that an appropriate name for this rare and isolated species would be Ophidion exul, because exul is Latin for exile. This specimen is particularly important because this is the specimen that is linked to the new name. So we call that the holotype and it's very important for science and for a natural history collections uh, because this is the specimen that future scientists would go back to if they're going to do any further work uh, on the genus or to identify new species. We have over 700,000 fish specimens in our collection here at the Canadian Museum of Nature, including over 30 holotypes and there are at least as many stories. <laughs>